All right, what's happening, man? I'm back at it with another one. And look, this next one is something that I wanted to talk about because um, I, I think it shows that there are still, you know, people out there who will step up and do the right thing, even when it's not the popular thing to do. Um, this happened about two weeks ago. So I kind of sat on it a little bit. And uh, yeah, you know what? Let's check this one out. Uh, Cause I think it's important to talk about, and then I'll just come back with my thoughts about this situation as usual. Philadelphia police say they've arrested three people in connection with a disturbing attack on a school crossing guard back in November happened in the city's strawberry mansion section. Two of the suspects are teenagers. Action news reporter Brianna Smith is live outside of Philadelphia police headquarters with the full story. Brianna. Rick, Philadelphia police described the attack as vicious and horrible. Now they're proud to say the three suspects are in custody with the help of officers, but mainly the public. This hits home with us, and I want to thank the public for realizing that. Philadelphia police captain Frank Banford sends a message of gratitude to the community for leading them to suspects. We put out something on social media within two hours. We had multiple phone calls identifying these three individuals. Police arrested 18-year-old Destiny Sanders and 26-year-old Amani Thomas Wednesday afternoon. Banford says the 15-year-old suspect turned herself in, escorted by a relative. Police say back in November, the crossing guard was just doing her job on the corner of 28th Street and Cecil B. Moore Avenue in Strawberry Mansion when a student who was just assaulted asked to use her phone to call a parent. After this transpires, People get angry that the crossing guard is assisting with something that happened on the corner. Action News obtained this video that shows an argument and then the crossing guard being attacked. She tries to get on the bus, the 33 bus, to get away. They drag her off of the bus, drag her to the ground, start beating her, punching her, kicking her. Banford says the guard had swelling and bruises all over her body and was taken to the hospital. And I hope she has a full recovery and uh, she can get back to work. Parents hope this sets a precedent to help solve future crimes. The people will have to speak up because they have to be brave because there are a lot of punks out here that just don't have the right home training. And maybe we're just gonna have to step up as a community to show them the training that they need. He says the community could help put an end to the ongoing violence. Now, as for the crossing guard, Philadelphia police say she's traumatized by the incident, but thankfully she's out of the hospital and on her road to recovery. Reporting live outside police headquarters, Brianna Smith, Channel 6 Action News. Rick? Brianna, thank you. All, All right, man. So, yeah, you saw what was going on in that situation. Um, these three, three ladies, um, they, they jumped on a crossing guard. Uh, back in November, and they just um, identified them like two uh, two weeks ago. Um, they got you know caught, and um, I, you know I, I don't understand it. Like, uh, did they not think that? I guess I guess maybe they thought that nobody would say anything, and that nobody would kind of step up, you know. But how how are you going to get mad at somebody else and, and, and beat up somebody else for helping out somebody in need? You get what I'm saying? Because what I was reading, too, is um, the police, they were saying that uh, one of the suspects may have been involved in the initial attack on the girl. And that would, you know, that would make sense, you know, as to re the reason why the young girl, you know, went to the school crossing guard, you know, to get help. Um, but, I mean, for these fools, because, I mean, that's what they are. They, they, they're they fools. Um, I guess they weren't expecting nobody to do anything. And they weren't expecting the neighborhood to step up and help with getting them identified. I mean, wrong is wrong. And, and, and what they did was just stupid. And I think people, um, I think people now, they're getting tired of it. They're getting sick and tired of stuff like this going down every day. Um, and I mean, what, what is a 26-year-old and an 18-year-old doing? Hanging out with a 15-year-old, getting into trouble, fighting. I mean, when you would think that, Somebody that's older, the 26-year-old and 18-year-old, you would think that they were maybe um, trying to be like a, a, a positive role model or some sort and, and not encourage a 15-year-old, you know, to, to get into this type of trouble. 
you know. Um, but I guess, you know, birds of a feather, you know, flock together. Um, but it, it just kind of takes me back to a time, and I, and I remember stuff like this happening, uh, where we had a lot of dudes that were uh, older than us, and they went to the same school, so they was kind of, you know, they, was ahead, they were ahead of us, and uh, they would either graduate or drop out, but they would be hanging out on the block after school, after school got out, and a lot of the kids had to go home, you know, take that same route home. And um, these fools, they would be out there encouraging the kids to get into fights. Some of them were out there involved in the fights themselves. And at that time, I'm looking at it like, man, didn't y'all like leave school two, maybe three years ago? And y'all still out here hanging on the block, getting involved in middle school and high school beef? <laughs> It's crazy, but um, I mean, at, at the age of eighteen and, and and twenty six years old, you should be out there doing something constructive with your time, not going up to a school or or hanging out on the corner, jumping on somebody. And if and if you don't want to do anything constructive with your time and your life, that's your right. I mean, you you can do that. That is your right. But if that's what you decide to do, then just leave other people alone. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, what if this woman, the crossing guard, what if she would have had a pistol or a knife on her and did them in, all three of them? Then what? I mean, then you would have had their parents, uh, uh, their friends and other family members all on the news crying, making a big fuss when they were the ones in the wrong. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, I, I think people are just sick and tired of it. They're fed up. Um they're fed up with the nonsense. They're they're fed up with being terrorized and pretty much held hostage in these neighborhoods. And and hopefully these three individuals, hopefully they'll face some some heavy consequences and not just get slaps on the wrist either. Because we've seen how that goes when um, you know it start out they 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 get locked up, they get released, and then they go out and, and do something you know worse than what they did before. And it's like man, how y'all let them out? You know. Uh, but, um, yeah, for the school crossing guard, yeah, I definitely want to wish her a speedy recovery. I mean, not just from the physical injuries, but also, you know, from the psychological injuries, because stuff like this, it, it has a way of affecting your mental health. And I, I know she's going to heal from the physical injuries, but it's going to probably take a little bit more time to um, heal from the mental trauma that she had to endure, because nobody goes to work and, and expects to be uh, to be assaulted. You know what I mean? And and it's good that the neighborhood stood up and they didn't turn a blind eye to the situation because I know usually that's kind of like what happens. Um, you know, somebody in the community, they know something, but they're not going to say anything. But it's good that they, uh, the, um, the neighborhood stepped up and stepped in, and hopefully we see more of that happening. You know, because it's already hard enough out here for people who just want to try to live their lives and and. and you know, get up and go to work every day and, and just trying to get by. And, and it's, it's, it's tough when you got to deal with the extra stress of, of, of having people like these three individuals in the neighborhood who don't have anything else better to do with their time. So just a little something to think about. And um, I, I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.